How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can use MVVM in SwiftUI. And to demonstrate it, we're going to be creating this sample app. And as you can see, we have a toggle switch, which just toggles a button. We have an increment counter, and we also have a list where we can add these items, as many as we want, in fact. And this is all going to be using the MVVM architecture to make this all happen. So we're going to learn how to write very clean code for much bigger projects when we get to creating bigger projects. But the application itself is very simple. It's just a list of items and an increment counter and a toggle switch. And of course, an add item button at the bottom. So the first thing we're going to cover is the model. And in case you didn't know, MVVM actually stands for model view view model. So we're going to have to use these three things to make our program work and to actually create this clean architecture. So inside our folder over here, go ahead and right click and create a new file, which is just going to be a Swift file. And we're going to call it item model and go ahead and create it. Now the item is actually going to be a struct of item, which is identifiable and codable. So nothing we have not seen yet. And we need to create a var ID, which will equal a new UUID for each instance of this item, a var of name, which will be of type string, and a var of description, which will also be of type string. And it's always a good idea to have a example item or an example of your model. So go ahead and create a static var example item, which is going to equal an item with some sample data such as Xbox and a sample description. So we can always use this in the future in case we need to provide an example to the preview or inside our program for previewing purposes. And that's all we need to do to create a model. We just have a standard item which is identifiable and codable. So now we can go ahead and transition to creating the view model. So go ahead and hold Command plus N. It's going to be another Swift file. And here we're just going to call it content view model and tap on create. And now the view model is in charge of taking care of all the functionality in our UI. It should not be mixed with the UI. This is where we actually create the changes and take care of the state. And the model is where we model the data. So the model is there to provide a model for the view model. And the view model can be described as a kind of means of communication between the view and the model with added functionality, of course. So inside here, first we want to go ahead and import Swift UI, and we're going to create an extension on content view, which means this will only be allowed to be used inside our content view. And that allows us to create a class with a very generic name that can only be used in content view and not confused with our other views. So first we need to ensure that everything's always happening on the main thread. So go ahead and add the at main actor keyword and it's going to be class of view mod, which will conform to the observable object protocol. Now inside here, we're going to create some published variables. So at published var is turned on, and this is going to be of type Boolean, which will be set to false initially to keep track of our toggle state. Then we need to create a counter. So at published var counter, which is set to zero initially. And we also want to keep track of our items. So at published, var item list is going to equal an array of item and it's going to be empty initially. So that's going to take care of creating our variables, the ones that we will use inside content view. And usually this would be defined as an at state variable, but in this case, we're going to keep track of changes through the at published keyword. Then we're going to create a function called increment and all it's going to do is increment the counter by one. Then we want to go ahead and add random items to our item array. So go ahead and type in function add item. And inside here, we need to let random items equal an array. And the first one's going to be a PlayStation followed by an Xbox, if I can spell that, followed by my favorite Nintendo Wii and a plain Game Boy. Now we want to get a random item. So let item equal random items dot random element. And we will create a new item from that. So let new item equal item. And the name is going to be set to the item. And the description is going to have item 
backslash interpolation item list dot count plus one. So we can count each item in our list. And why are you unhappy program? And the program is suggesting that we unwrap this, but since we know that it's never going to be nil, go ahead and add an exclamation mark to your item. So we can guarantee that it's not going to be nil. Now, the final thing to do inside here is to go ahead and add an with animation wrapper. And inside here, we'll type in item list dot insert new element, which is the new item at the index of zero. So it appears at the top first and gets pushed down each time we add a new item. So as you can see, the view model just contains all of the functionality plus all of the variables that we want to use in the UI. We're not going to place these into the UI directly because that's going to break the principle of separating these concerns. We want to make sure that the functionality stays in its own place and the variables stay in their own place and that the content view is only dealing with the UI. But thanks to all of that, I can now go ahead and show you how we can inject a view model. So inside here, go ahead and create at state object private var view model, which I'm going to abbreviate to VM, is going to equal view model. Now we can use everything that's inside the view model and keep track of its state just by referencing VM. So the very first thing we have to do is wrap this in a V stack. And we're going to start with a toggle. And the toggle is going to say, toggle switch and is on is going to be set to the binding value of the view model dot is turned on and we want to provide some padding but let's go ahead and run this program immediately and you're going to notice that we'll already have the switch here and that the functionality is already working so we can use this as many times as we want and this is going to be referencing the view model so it's going to be touching this part over here and updating it accordingly which means right now so far we have implemented our view model correctly and we can refer to it just by referring to the view model and none of that is written inside the content view which is great news but moving on we have to go ahead and create an h stack and here we're going to type in button which will tell them to increment and here we're just going to type vm increment. So that's going to call the increment function in our view model and increment the counter number inside there each time. But we also want to see those changes reflected in the program. So here we're going to go ahead and type in backslash vm.counter and edit this text a bit more. So dot bold with a foreground color of dot gray and a padding. So let's go ahead and run this program once again. And with that, you'll notice that we'll have a button that's calling some functionality from the view model and also keeping track of this state of this counter over here. And each time we click on them, it's going to increment the counter by one using the functionality in the view model. So once again, we have nothing that we wrote inside the content view. We're just referencing it to our view model. And finally, let's go ahead and implement the list. So it's going to be a list of vm.itemList and for each item in this list, we're going to go ahead and create an h stack, and it's going to have some text of item.name, a spacer, and a text of item.description. So now that's going to be covering the bottom section of our application, but we have no way to add any elements to this list, so we also have to create the button for that. But right before that, let me just add a few more modifications, such as list style, we're going to set to plain, so it goes from left to right and covers the whole screen. And I want to make sure that the background is set to a dot thin material. So we have some sort of opacity in the background. And finally, we can just add the button, which will say add item. And inside here, we type in vm dot add item as simple as that and add some padding. And this over here is going to take care of adding the item to our list once again, by referring to our view model. So everything we wrote inside our content view is referencing the view model and keeping our code very clean inside here. So all we have to worry about inside here is creating some beautiful view for the user to experience your app through. And yeah, with that being done, we can go ahead and run the app one last time. And you're going to notice that this time we can even add items and they slide in beautifully. 
And this was all done using some clean architecture of MVVM. And of course, this was a very simple project, but as your projects get much, much bigger, you're going to want to fall back on these kind of architectures because they will just help you manage your code a lot more cleanly. And as you can see, we can add lots of items, we can increment the counter as much as we want, and we can toggle this button as many times as we want. So the app works cleanly, it has clean architecture, and yeah, that actually covers the very basic principles of using MVVM. And with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.